Next, we have a video in honor of Senator, our late Senator and late Secretary of Treasury and our good Democratic friend, Senator Lloyd Benson. The Texas delegation several years ago created a video to honor Senator Benson. Uh, he was, he did a great things for our country, for our state, and specifically, let me tell you, the largest amount of money ever raised in a single event for the Texas Democratic Party was done for us while I was chairman by Senator Lloyd Benson in 1984. As a matter of fact, he sold the place out to a point of overflow. We had to set up speakers out in the lobbies of, and whatnot because people couldn't get in. And people were saying, oh, but I paid $100. Well, I'm sorry, there ain't no more room inside. So he was a great senator, a great, a great man, a great friend, and he was a great Democrat and a grand supporter of the Texas Democratic Party. So the video now for Senator Lloyd Benson. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. Lloyd Benson was one of the quiet generation of Americans who stumbled out of the humbling Republican Depression into a world in flame. They put their lives on hold, became fierce warriors who stood their ground under fire and saved the world. Their actions always spoke more loudly than their words. In 1942, Lloyd Benson set aside his new law degree from the University of Texas and did what he knew was most honorable. He volunteered to serve his country. The young B-24 pilot flew 35 combat missions, robbing Hitler of much of his precious supply of gasoline in a large arc around southern Italy. He was a natural leader, what we used to call a man's man. At age 23, Lloyd Benson was promoted to major and given command of a 600-man squadron. He fought on. He was awarded the Distinguished Flying Cross and the Air Medal with three Oak Leaf Clusters and was promoted to Colonel in the Air Force Reserve. Then, the warriors returned home to raise families, start businesses, assume their responsibilities in public service, and rebuild a nation. Lloyd married Beryl Ann and she became his life partner. They dove headlong into a new life and a family. B.A. and Lloyd had three children. Later, in public life, he would always introduce her as B.A., Benson's asset. And she is. The young pilot was not through commanding leadership and serving people. He practiced law and served two years as Hidalgo County Judge. Then, at 27, he was elected the youngest member of the U.S. House of Representatives. Washington wasn't a bombing run over the Nazis, but at times it proved treacherous. But once again, Lloyd Benson triumphed. His mission was accomplished. For six years, he worked to help America make the transition to peace, and then went home and attacked business with the same vigor. The bomber pilot, judge, and congressman became Lloyd Benson, business leader. To be modest in this story, let's just say, he was successful, very successful. But there was always another mission, another challenge. His friend, Governor John Connolly, urged him to run for the U.S. Senate against incumbent Ralph Yarbrough. It was a tough fight, but once again, Benson won, and then faced a Republican, George Bush, in the general election. I want to help meet this challenge as United States Senator from Texas. Be sure you go to the polls November 3rd to help Lloyd Benson help Texas. He beat Bush handily. One reporter even called it a mugging. He hit the Senate running, got his bearings, and began moving into leadership. Business Week magazine said, Don't be fooled by his soft-spoken demeanor. Lloyd Benson is one tough cookie. In a Congress today that is known too well for mean-spirited partisanship, Lloyd Benson's type of leadership is sorely missed. 
when he was chairman of the Joint Economic Committee in 1978 and 1979. The normally contentious panel produced bipartisan reports for the only time in its history. These people in public office who just follow the latest public opinion poll, I really think are doing a disservice to their country. Some of these people in public office think the way to get reelected is to make no waves at all. No. Shy back from responsibility. Not speak out on the tough issues. I think you have to face up to that responsibility. That means that you take some unpopular stands sometimes. That also means that you get public criticism. But that's part of the job. He considered running for president, but this just wasn't his time. He went back to hard work in the Senate, leaving hundreds of thousands of Americans wondering why our very best was not on the ballot where they believed he belonged. The Almanac of American Politics was still asking this question in 1990. Lloyd Benson is one of two or three American politicians who is plainly of presidential stature. In breadth of experience, in depth of knowledge, in traits of character, a steely self-discipline, and the capacity to rebound after setbacks, he is far and away the superior of most of the candidates who ran for the office in 1984 and 1988, and of some who have held it in the past. In 1987, Lloyd Benson became chairman of the powerful Finance Committee and distinguished himself all over the world, taking the tough positions to improve the economy and make our system fair for all people. The president of the American Business Council said, Benson managed the committee under the most difficult of tactical circumstances with equanimity and grace. The AFL-CIO said, We've always had access to him, even when we violently disagreed. When Republicans claimed credit for an economic upturn in the Reagan years, Benson put it into perspective by saying, If you let me write $2 billion worth of hot checks every year, I'd give you an illusion of prosperity too. It was always hard to bluff Lloyd Benson. In 1988, the Democratic Party reached out once more to Lloyd Benson for help and he became the running mate to Michael Dukakis at the same time he was running for re-election to the U.S. Senate. I have as much experience in the Congress as Jack Kennedy did when he sought the presidency. Senator, I served with Jack Kennedy. I knew Jack Kennedy. Jack Kennedy was a friend of mine. Senator, you're no Jack Kennedy. Like always, he stood his ground, fought the good fight, and never blamed others. He handled defeat like a warrior, like a man. Of course, Lloyd Benson was re-elected to the Senate. Texans know a good thing, no matter who is president. The Cold War was over, but the world felt threatened again by economics. The giant of world trade and commerce, the United States, was hemorrhaging money with huge deficits that threatened world economic stability. Governor Bill Clinton made the economy the center of his campaign. And when he became president, he, of course, turned to Lloyd Benson. Will you be my treasurer, he asked. Benson said yes and resigned from the Senate he loved so much. The stakes were high. Lloyd Benson convinced the administration to give top priority to deficit reduction and helped shape the deficit reduction package. I worked day and night with Lloyd Benson in 1993 and 1994, and Lloyd had been a friend for a long, long time before we entered the administration. He was absolutely critical in developing the 1993 deficit reduction program. He understood the problem. He was central in drafting legislation, and then he used his vast experience and skill in working and fighting to get this legislation passed in Congress. I, I don't think there's any question that he was absolutely indispensable, not only in the deficit reduction program in 1993, but in the full range of the president's broad-based economic strategy and all that was accomplished in 1993 and 1994, his years in Treasury. I am so pleased to be able to join you to celebrate the life of a man who has truly lived the American dream. At an age where most of us look to fishing and grandchildren for our next challenges, Lloyd accepted the toughest job I had to offer when he became my first Treasury Secretary. It was at a moment of real economic crisis for our country, and Lloyd had to take tough decisions on how to cut our deficits and get our economy moving again. 
He had to convince the financial markets and our trading partners overseas that we were serious. And to be honest, he had some convincing to do here in Washington as well. But he succeeded beyond all expectations. And he put us on a path to eliminating the deficit and running a record surplus to the longest peacetime expansion in our nation's history and 20 million new jobs, to respect and leadership in the international economy. His return to his beloved Texas five years ago was our loss, but your gain. Lloyd likes to say that the sun always shines on Benson. Well, that may be true, but thanks in large part to him. The light of a strong economy and decent health care and a secure retirement now is shining all across America. Lloyd Benson and his wonderful partner of 56 years, B.A., deserve our gratitude as well as our admiration. I thank you both for your leadership, for your friendship, and your lifetime of service to our nation. I know of no other way that you affect more lives, hopefully for the better, than you can in public service. So it's been a privilege to work for my country as a civilian and as a soldier. And it reflects, it reflects how strongly I believe in the American system. Lloyd Benson, husband to B.A., father, U.S. House member, businessman, senator, chairman of finance, candidate for vice president, secretary of the treasury, a warrior for his country. He protected us, guided our past, and helped build our future. Can anyone deny that this man is a true American hero?